Welcome to ADTV and today you catch up with us at Potter High and Boatyard and we're taking a closer look at an extremely interesting project alongside the Environment Agency. Now I'm joined by Steve Lane, thanks for oh, joining us, so I know you're a very sure. busy man. <laughs> But I just want to pick your brains a little bit exactly what you're doing today and why you're here. This is all really part of um, what we're calling the Northern Broads Tagging Project. Okay. Um, and actually this project's running alongside a PhD that's um, being run by Bournemouth University Natural England, yep. which is based in and around Hofton on the Bure system, okay. so Wroxham and that area. So we've widened that out with using rod licence money. We're looking at the whole of the Northern Broads, so we, we're looking now at the Bure, the Thurn and the Ant. Major system, lots of yeah. brawls, lots of dikes, lots of rivers. Loads of water. Loads of water space. Um, and because of that, it's really complex and we don't know enough about how fish use it, how they move through it, yeah. what habitats they use, and all this sort of stuff. And perhaps what's relevant to places like Pot High and when we get salt tides and salt surge is yeah. how they respond to that. You know, where do they go? Where do they get entrapped? Is there anywhere else in the system we can protect? So this is all about trying to learn much more about the fish dogs. Yeah. Really. So in essence, you're, you're almost watching where they're moving. They ping at these in particular tagging points that you've got as yep. they swim through. Yep. And you can just watch them throughout the whole system where they're Absolutely. Going. So we've got network of receivers around the whole system in strategic points. So. If a pike from here goes up the Bure, we're going to know. Okay. If they're going up the top end of the Thurn to spawn, we'll have a much better idea of that. And we can then start looking at what they're spawning on, yeah. what habitats they're using, is there enough of it, can we improve it? All these sorts of questions. So if we want to you know, improve and safeguard yeah. fishing for the future, we're doing that on the basis of evidence. We've got a much better yeah. handle I on I guess that's a, that's a great point of why you're doing it. So you can get so much information and technology you guys are yeah. using yeah. that if you need to protect spawning areas and stuff like that, you yeah. can really protect the fish in Absolutely. For the fish of the future, really. Absolutely. I guess. So again, when we had the primnesium on the thern, yeah. you know, we had primnesium at the top of the thern, salt on the bottom end of the thern, so the fish are really yes. under, yeah. getting it from both ends. But again, the more we can understand how they use the system yeah. and where they are, we've got a much better chance of managing yeah. the that. The more you understand, the more you can help, I guess. Isn't Absolutely. And, and what's been great about this project, and today you've seen it, for example, is just the sheer number of anglers that yeah. have turned out on a, a mini army out there. Grim old Saturday, yeah. you know, to help yeah. us, which is awesome, you know, and um, we really appreciate it. And it's key to getting the fish to us in good condition, and yeah. you know, they get tagged well and they go back well. So, really pleased. But on that subject, I know you've got some fish to get on yeah, with, we'll so I on. know you're a busy yeah. man. Thanks for taking time <laughs> to talk Steve. to us. Yeah. Cheers. Let's get you going. All right, cheers. So we just popped inside what I call this your mobile office. We're joined by Andy from Fish Tracks and we're just gonna have a quick chat with you because I know you're actually in here doing the procedures on the fish when they arrive from the anglers. So just wanna pick your brains about the ins and outs of the tags that are going in and the process. So if you could run it from perhaps start to finish what happens when you get the fish here. So initially they come in on the van from the anglers being caught, is that correct? Yeah, that is yeah. correct. The fish come into us in oxygenated tanks to look after them. Yep. From there on in, they're in my care uh, while they undergo the surgical procedures. Um, we have three tanks just to the side of us. Yep. Uh, one is an anaesthetic tank, we have a recovery tank and we have a holding tank. So traditionally the fish go into the holding tank and we examine them for external injuries and make sure they're all okay, fit yeah. for surgery. From there on, each individual fish is selected and anaesthetized in the anaesthetic tank. Once that fish is anaesthetized, it goes onto the surgery table, yep. whereby we carry out the surgery to put the tags inside the fish. We have two types of tags that are surgically implanted, um, a microchip tag, like you use for microchipping animals, and we have a hydroacoustic tag which has a battery inside it. So one is inert and lasts the life of the animal, and the other one will last about three years and always transmits the signal, whereas the other one is activated. Once the tags are inside the animal, the animal is stitched up, um, in this case it's pike, we then seal the wound, um, and then we move on to the external tags which go just under the skin which are a visual implant tag and they're like a small small readable uh, acetate tag that goes just under the skin. They're the ones at the back in the dorsal. Absolutely yeah. they go in the dorsal fin between the fin rays in the clear tissue and, and they're very much like a, a little bit like a number plate but they're a, a letter and a code yep. so that you can understand what, the, what each of those is saying and you can record it which identifies the individual animal. Oh, yeah. 
And then on top of that, we introduce an elastomer die also to the dorsal fin that also stays for life and it indicates whether it, this fish was part of the process, uh, part of the project, but has lost its tags. Yeah. So it's, it's a belt and braces approach okay, really. Yeah. And um, uh, as you've noticed, uh, when things are going well, it's a pretty quick Very operation. slick operation, probably pretty a couple quick. of minutes yeah, say, yeah. and you're in and out. Yeah. You're, you're, you're pretty much right. It, a couple of minutes is all it takes. But it's like anything, it's only as good as your support staff. So everyone exactly. knows their role, everyone uh, carries out their role, which, which just enables me to get on with my job. And that's why it's successful. Cool. And then once you've done that, the fish goes into a little recovery tank. Absolutely. And the and recovery tank is oxygenated and aerated, which are both different uh, and for different reasons. And that fish is observed until we are happy that it's regained its equilibrium and it's re fully yeah. recovered. And then over a period of time, we'll stack up several fish and once we're happy with all those fish they'll go back into a much bigger transport tank yep. and then they'll be eventually taken away uh, yeah. and, and released back into the wild. Yeah, it's quite interesting for you take them back to where they were caught from so that's quite a nice little yeah. bit as well. Yeah because we don't we don't want to stress the fish any more than we have to so we return them to where they're captured so they can recontinue the, yeah. the, their life they were leading before they were even caught none and the then and then and none the worse for it and then we observe where they go from that. Brilliant well thanks for that I know there's some more fish in the way so I'll let you get on and get prepared for the next lot. I'm perhaps going to have a quick word of Emily because I know she gets a couple more bits of data as well. We'll chat for there. So many thanks for that. We'll let you crack on and we'll leave you to it. So we've managed to pull Emily aside just while we're waiting for some more fish to turn up. So thanks for taking the time to mm -hmm. have a quick chat with us. So correct me if I'm wrong, you do actually doing a PhD in this? I am, yeah, yeah, through Bournemouth Uni um, and in partnership with the Environment Agency in Natural England. Yeah, yeah. so definitely clued up to exactly what you're doing. Uh, but what's really interesting for me, watching a procedure inside the tent, is you personally are taking three different samples from the fish. Yeah, exactly. So I'm taking scales, uh, a fin clip and also mucus samples. Um, the scales we can use for age determination, uh, okay. it's like when you look at a scale under a microscope you can see the rings almost like the rings of a tree right okay yeah. uh, which they lay down each year uh, and then we also use the scales along with the other two tissues to look at where and what the fish have been feeding on in the system after some preparation in the lab you can say look at where along a salinity gradient the fish have been feeding and where in the food chain they've been exactly. feeding. So from three relatively small bits of information you are gaps so much with age, where it's been eating, what it's eating, where it's living and all Absolutely, sorts of stuff like that. Absolutely, yeah. Perfect complement to the telemetry stuff. Yeah, exactly. You can see how together everything you're doing there, grabbing so much information of what's going on inside yeah. the broad system. So yeah. I'll let you get back onto it. I know you're busy and there's more fish on, but thanks for taking the time mate. No problem. And, uh, Cheers. Cheers.